If your guitar playing today lacks accuracy, I bet you a dollar to a broken guitar string. The answer has to do with your two-hand synchronization. Once you get your hands in tighter sync, your accuracy, your speed, your clarity, everything about your playing is going to improve and will feel a lot easier. And today, I'm going to show you how to get there. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. And before we get into the nuts and bolts of how to build two-hand synchronization, we got to ask, why aren't your hands already in sync? today. Yeah, I want to know how come. I'm going to show you the top reasons why you may struggle with two-hand synchronization today, and then I'll show you a simple exercise you can do in just five minutes or so per day during your warm-up time that improves both your two-hand synchronization and your picking hand accuracy at the same time. Let's get into it. Reason number one, weak pick attack. Now, two-hand synchronization is a byproduct of learning what it feels like for both hands to hit the string at the exact same time. But when your pick attack is weak, you don't get to learn what that feels like because you don't get as much of a tactile response from the pick hitting the string with enough power to memorize that feeling. And the reason why your pick attack becomes weaker could be many factors, but the main one is holding the pick way too close to the tip as if you're trying to do pinch harmonics. The problem with that is you have a very small portion of the pick hitting the string, which makes for a softer note, and that creates weak pick attack that disrupts your two-hand synchronization at faster tempos. And the way you solve this problem is by dipping the pick just one extra millimeter or so in between the strings. See what I did there? I went from very shallow picking depth to slightly deeper by about one millimeter or so. You can barely see it, but this one extra millimeter makes a huge difference. Notice what happens when I try to do a slow tremolo on one note, and I go back and forth between very shallow picking depth and slightly deeper picking depth. I'm not going to hit the string any harder, but notice what happens to the sound. The notes suddenly get louder even though I wasn't picking it any harder, but I was using more of the pick to hit it. And that one millimeter of difference often makes all the difference at higher tempos when you need to be able to know that your hands are in sync or not. The next big reason your synchronization may be lacking right now is because of excessive slow practice. It's like this. When you slow down enough, you can get your hands to do just about anything perfectly. And that means your synchronization simply isn't challenged enough at slow speeds, and that's what makes it hard for it to improve. If you want to increase your synchronization, you need to find the tempo where it begins to break down the threshold of two-hand synchronization, as I like to call it, and practice right around that tempo, swirling slightly above and slightly below that tempo to really challenge yourself and make synchronization go up. Let's say your current top speed today with a scale sequence is 120 beats per minute on the metronome and 16th notes. And let's say you always practice at 60 beats per minute and 16th notes and your playing is perfect at that tempo, it sounds good and you're happy. But once you start increasing, say, past 100 beats per minute, that's when your mistakes start to happen more and more as you creep from 100 to 120. By the time you get to 120, that's when your playing feels like you're right on the edge of your abilities. Like if you played in front of an audience or you increase the metronome by even two more beats per minute, it would fall apart completely. In this example, your threshold is somewhere around 100 beats per minute, and you should practice somewhere around that 100 beats per minute level. So somewhere between 95 and 105, let's say, where it's just challenging enough to require your full concentration, but also there are some slow moments in there which, where you are within your threshold at 95 or so beats per minute, where you're not going to make any mistakes, and then you're challenging yourself just going right outside your threshold as you gradually close the gap between 100 and 120 and gradually make your mistakes go away. Now, to be perfectly clear, I'm not saying that all slow practice is bad. What I am saying is that slow practice is not the answer to every single problem you ever have in your guitar playing, in your technique, or in your speed. Sometimes you absolutely need a lot of slow practice, like when you're undoing a bad habit, or learning a new motion, or changing something about your technique. But when you already have a good foundation of technique in place, you can't just be doing slow practice all the time because it's not going to work. And now let's get to the exercise I promised to show you at the beginning of this video that's going to get your hands 
tighter in sync and improve your accuracy along with it. All you do is take whatever licks, exercises, musical examples, or scale sequences you're already working on, and you practice them with two little tweaks. The first tweak is to practice it unplugged. So no clean tone, no distortion, no nothing, amplifier off. So if you're playing a scale sequence, it might sound something like this. and so on. And I want you to practice it at the speed that's as close to the threshold we talked about earlier as possible. It's probably going to be slower, maybe a little bit slower, maybe quite a bit slower than the threshold that you have with distortion, just because you have to hit the strings harder to get the notes to come out. So slow down if necessary, but still it has to be fast enough to really be challenging. And the second little tweak is I want you to practice it with exaggerated articulation. I want you to imagine you're in the middle of a football stadium and there are 40,000 people all gathered to hear you play guitar, but you realize you forgot your amp at home. All you have is your unplugged electric guitar. How loudly would you play to have 40,000 people hear you? That's the visualization, the mental image I want you to have in your mind. And the goal is to get your maximum speed of playing unplugged as close as you can to your top speed of playing with distortion. It's not going to be exactly the same, it's always going to be slightly slower, but the closer you can get to it, the better, the more synchronization you're going to build, and the more your accuracy is going to increase. So for the next week, challenge yourself to do this. Take five minutes while warming up and practice playing any exercise, any scale sequence or lick with maximum power. Dig the pick a little bit deeper into the strings by about one millimeter like we talked about, but at the same time, don't be afraid to hit the strings hard. If you watch yourself in the mirror and see your forearm muscles popping like this, you're doing it right. It means you're developing a good reserve of strength and power in your picking hand, and that's going to pay big dividends when it comes to your speed. Here's what it should sound and look like when you're doing this exercise. And what I meant earlier when I said it's going to pay big dividends when it comes to your speed is by building more reserve of strength in your picking hand, when you turn on distortion or your amp, you're not going to be using more than 15 to 20% of the overall power you have in your picking hand, if even that. So what that means is if you have more overall reserve of strength in your picking hand, it's going to be easier to play at your current speeds, and it's of course also going to be easier to play at your faster speeds as well. So building more strength reserve in your picking hand is going to help you not just with building more speed, but more importantly making that speed sound good, which is of course the goal. As you practice this exercise, you may very well find that the rest of your body begins to tense up in response to you hitting the notes with more power. For example, your jaw might get tense, your shoulders might get more tense, you might start holding your breath, your feet might get tense totally normal. What you need to do is treat this as an opportunity to relax that excessive tension and treat this as just a sign that excessive tension isn't something you totally mastered yet. Again, totally normal, which is why you practice guitar. So this is just going to be a greater challenge for you to learn to play without excessive tension and you work to relax it little by little, one practice session at a time, and you'll be good to go. If you want to know more about building guitar speed, specifically how do you practice once you get your basic positioning down of the two hands, what do you actually do to make speed happen? And how do you do this without starting slow and gradually building up speed in small increments? If you already tried this and you already know this doesn't really work all that well, I want to show you a different way to build speed that doesn't require any slow practice. And it's free. If you want to know what it is, hit the link below and I'll show it to you. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell so you're notified every time I upload new videos just like this for you. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. I'll see you next time.